there and welcome. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, if you're into different crafting projects, different uh, thrift flips and furniture makeovers, you're in the right spot. And I invite you to subscribe so that you can keep being in the right spot for some new ideas. I try and make an effort of doing some different things each time so you don't see me doing the same thing. You know, some things may be repetitive for you, some things may be brand new. Um, hopefully there's enough to interest you today. Now, okay, I don't know when you're seeing this, but the timing right now is that it's like early September, it's the cusp of, um, you know, the, the summer weaning, the fall beginning, and IOD came out with their winter release and everybody in their brother is doing Christmas. <laughs> And I'm still on t-shirts. I'm not ready for Christmas yet. I will get there for you, I promise. And I will do some things early enough for you to be able to jump on it. But um, I love fall. I'm not prepared to jump over it. So today I wanted to do a couple of different fall projects, um, different ideas, things that you could be doing. And, uh, you know, get you, get you on a roll, get you started with that. So to jump on to the first one. I thrifted this big um, metal, like he's a wall hanger. I actually squished him down like this, just to flatten him out a little bit so that he could lie flat on a table. And what I'm thinking of is a big honking tablescape for Thanksgiving, right? So going into the fall season, Thanksgiving. I debated painting him, I debated decoupaging him, I debated a bunch of things, but what I decided to do was leave the metal as it is, but with one little twist. I want to do a little bit of aging on it. So that needs to sit at least overnight. So we're gonna get rolling on that first. Okay, and for this, we need a couple of things, and I'm just going to apply it with a chip brush, and because I'm gonna need it sitting up, I'm going to do this. So, uh, glass candlestick that I haven't gotten around to doing anything with. Um, the top part is out of the frame a little bit, but you're okay. <laughs> it's the same concept up there as down in the bottom. Um, let me just take this little bit of a label off. And I need to, I know it's on the back, but it would bug me. Okay. So, what I need to do first. Got a little, little cup. I have hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and I got salt. Any salt would do. I just happen to have coarse salt hanging around here. I don't know if I had, oh wait. Okay. I have some fine salt hanging out around here. I'd rather the fine, but any salt will do. Just the fine salt one because it will dissolve easier. So the mixture for this aging is roughly one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide. Oh, I think I went through this last time. With, okay. Safety. There's too many safety features on this sucker. Okay, we're just opening the whole thing up. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's a pump. Oh, who knows? Okay, I'm just pouring. So roughly a tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide to a tablespoon of salt to about an eighth of a cup of vinegar. So I'm going to kind of roughly double it. Thereabouts. Which explains when people come in, why do you have hydrogen peroxide in your shop? I have all kinds of weird stuff in my shop. Okay, there's my salt. And then about a quarter cup. So an eighth and an eighth is a quarter. That's about right. Okay. Good enough. Um, I often cook this way too. I don't bake this way. I actually measure for baking. So that would be the one exception in my life where I make an effort to be a little bit more precise. So I'm just gonna stir this up together just to get that salt dissolved. And then you're just going to paint your metal. And 
different metals will react differently. We'll see how this does. It's a little bit of a kind of a galvanized kind of thing. So we'll see how that looks. But you can paint this mixture on and then let it dry and then paint more on. Continue to add more, especially if you're getting a reaction that you like. If I don't get any reaction at all, then uh, I'll come back at you with option two. <laughs> so I've had great luck with some metals and other metals have just not done a thing. And a lot of times it depends upon the coating that's on them and if they've sealed it if they haven't sealed it so I'm just gonna get that on there and dripping I'm gonna put this off to the side so that especially if I start to see a reaction I can add more and this is going on the floor on the floor over there okay and then on my wet splotch all right moving on because we've got a lot of painting to do so um, what I want to do, I have these canisters that I thrifted, so sugar, coffee, tea, and they have a nice little bamboo lid that fits on tight and the knob. I am going to paint all of the knobs. I'm going to spray paint them black, so just a matte black, so um, I'm going to unscrew them, take them over to, to uh, outside because I can still go outside and then I don't have the smell, um, and I'm going to spray paint the black. You don't need to see that. These ones, what I want to do is I want to finish them off in a series, in a trio. So I'm going to paint one black using Little Black Dress from DIY, one white, so I'm going to use White Swan from DIY, and one in an orange, right? So this one I'm going Halloween. I don't do a lot of Halloween crafts necessarily because it's not so much my thing. And it's so short um, that a lot of people, you know, again, in the shop, I, I don't have tons of turnover of Halloween items. But there's so many cute ideas. So I just want to do a, a couple here and there. -ish. We'll see how it goes. Most of the other things will be mostly fall. But I'm going to do this one in orange, which is Firestarter from DIY. So I'm going to paint one black, one white, one orange. And while I'm at it, I have this big kind of, Okay, so I want to say pear, but I think it's more gourd, like a gourd kind of shape. It's a paper mache one that I found at the thrift store. I'm going to paint it orange in the fire starter while I'm at it. So that's the, that's the whole off-camera stuff that will happen. These are slick, so I will need to add my DIY. It's clay-based paint. So it will actually adhere to the metal, but I will need to get one thin coat on first. So it kind of does it stick thing, let it dry thoroughly, and then add subsequent coat. Um, because of this stuff, my white, I'll probably need to at least do the front with three coats. Um, I haven't used Fire Starter before, so we'll have to see how that goes. I'm assuming as well, that this is going to absorb in, but I'm going to be doing stuff over top. So I'm just looking for the orange to be a base coat. So I'm just going to need one coat of the orange on this. Um, just as a little bit of an undercoat that echoes through and we're done. So a couple of coats of paint on the tins, one coat on this. I'll keep applying and see if I get any kind of rust action happening there or else I'm back at you sooner than I expect on that one. And uh, we'll carry on. I figured that while I still had dirty paint brushes and wet paint out, that I would maybe um, do another little tiny craft. I have these tiny little picture frames. I think you can get them at the dollar store. They're nothing great. I am going to paint these. So I am just taking the same black paint and I'm going to paint them the same colors as I did my jar um, as, as the little canisters. So I'm going to do one white, one orange, one black, and I'm painting them entirely. So that means I am painting the glass front and all of the frame. 
and we'll do a little something with these as well because why not? For our big gourd, we are actually going to decoupage onto it. And for this, I have these little napkins. So when you're decoupaging anything with napkins, and for those of you that have done this before, you know, sorry for the repeat, but you have to actually separate out the plies. Now, these ones, I'm going to, I find it easiest to go from a ripped surface, and because I'm gonna to wanna to separate, kind of rip these apart smaller anyway, um, I'm just tearing it down the center. And you can see that the pattern on one side is different than the pattern on the other anyway. Um, but you have to separate out the plies. Some, and this, this is the hardest part of using napkins, quite honestly, for me. So some are two ply, some are three ply. So the nice, thick, um, expensive, more expensive napkins, they're three ply. These are dollar store napkins, they're two ply. <laughs> But we're gonna want to get some of these separated so that we are ready to go with our decoupaging. And what I'm thinking, there we go, is doing the heavier pattern toward the bottom and the lighter pattern toward the top. Now, there's no special rhyme or reason to this. Um, I like to, to use like smaller pieces as I'm going. So they're gonna intermingle. They're all in the same color tone family. But what we are in essence doing is we're gonna take our Mod Podge. You can decoupage with, um, you can decoupage with almost any top coat. So in the DIY line, I would go with the um, Clear Patina, the Crystal Clear Chandelier. I would go with that. But I have a mess of Mod Podge because I use it for classes and, and things. So I'm going with that. In which case, add the medium to your surface and then add your napkins on top. Napkins are so thin. So you want to make sure that they are adhered but you definitely want to make sure that you're not brushing over the top of them too much until they've dried, okay? The more that you go back and work over the surface, the more likely you are for it to catch, for it to tear. So I just like to go where I might have a big wrinkle and put it down, but then I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna let it dry. And once this is dry, I will go over all of the surface that I've decoupaged with the napkin, and I will add another coat of my Mod Podge over top of that so that I make sure that they are all sealed in really well. Okay, so I'm just lightly taking my brush and kind of teasing out the edges just so that um, you know, any wrinkling, and this is a curved surface, so I'm gonna get wrinkles, but that they make sense. They're all kind of lying down flat. And I'm gonna do this kind of lighter pattern up higher, and then I will start using the heavier pattern as I start working my way down the, the pear gourd pumpkin, <laughs> whatever we wanna call it. <laughs> But one of the reasons why I wanted to, oh, I've got an overhead fan going and everything's blowing away. Um, one of the reasons why I had wanted to paint the pumpkin first is that whatever color it is, is going to echo up through your paper. So, you know, I painted the orange so that I could get a little bit of that orange tone coming through my paper. Uh, but bear that in mind that whatever color you're doing, you're gonna get some, some tones of that coming through your paper. So if you've got a paper that is really uh, pale, 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 don't use black, 
um, unless you really want to kind of color change it, right? You can do that very deliberately, but just be, just be aware of the impact of it. Well, our metal tin has had the night to dry and it, it sucks. <laughs> Didn't work. Um, what I did do, I'm just grabbing a towel because it's got, I can feel all the salt on it. And we're gonna have to do different to this to get it to work. There is some rust that happened. I think that you can see some of that. What I did have to do was I could see that nothing was happening with it except like right around the edges where I think that um, the coating had already worn off of this. So what I did do was I took my um, orbital sander and I sanded it down and tried to take all the sheen off of it and then reapplied. And so I think that's what I've got is that some of that... Um, took but like I said this has this coating on it and in order to be able to get the look that I was after I have to sand forever um so we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna just make it look kind of old and sort of crusty we're gonna do our own thing is really what it comes down to and to do this um I have a bunch of colors. As long as I'm painting, I'm, I'm probably gonna be adding some old 57, some light turquoise in there. I have some of the orange, um, which we used before, the fire starter. I also have some summer crush, which is more of like a burnt orange, which to me is, is more of the rusty. So I'm not sure how much of the bright orange I'll use. Um, layered chocolate, which is a deep rich brown. I have pennies from heaven. And I do have some of the um, Rust-Oleum metallic accent in bronze, just in case. So what I am gonna do to start is I am just going to paint it with predominantly the brown as my base coat. And then we'll start adding detail over top of that. So, I'm gonna get it all brown and then come back at you when this is dry and we will start adding details, <laughs> details then. But I wanted to show you and not cut that part out because you know I don't want you to think everything works perfectly all the time. And I also want you to learn from some of my mistakes in terms of you know that shiny galvanized metal really isn't gonna rest out for you. And I, and I thought it might not but I always think it's worth a shot first, meaning let me try it and see if my thoughts are correct. In this case, no, um, but sometimes I'm right. <laughs> While I'm waiting for my big cornucopia to dry, I'm going to continue on with my little frames. So what I do have are the JRV, so Jamie Ray Vintage Halloween Minis. She's got two different sets. This is the one that has the ha happy Halloween phrase. It's got a little ghost, a skeleton, witch on a broom, a pumpkin. And I thought that it just was a nice assortment to work with this. Of course, the stencils are too big <laughs> for my frames. Um, so I cut them down, all right? I cut the edges off, which means that I'm gonna be stenciling pretty close to an edge where the feet are and where the tip of the hat is or the top and bottom of my pumpkin, those outside edges. So all I want to do is just kind of put a little bit of um, painter's tape there so that when I'm stenciling, I can get the full paint impression, but I'm not gonna get my paint all over. all over my frame. And it's just one of those things to consider, whether you wanna cut your stencil down or you don't wanna cut, cut your stencil down, totally up to you, right? Um, I just felt very committed to these little guys in here and um, keeping, keeping it off is, is not a big deal. Um, and 
there are times that you might want to, you know, put tape over segments of your stencils because you're only, you only want certain words or certain phrases or only a piece of your stencil. So painter's tape masking it off is kind of a, just kind of a normal, a normal aspect of it. All right. Now, because I have an orange, a white, and a black frame, I want to paint one in orange. I'm gonna do the pumpkin in orange. I'm gonna do the ghost in white. Kinda makes sense, in which case my witch is black. So I have three different little stencil brushes. And the only thing to bear in mind when you are stenciling is that you want to ensure that you offload. And I'm going, I had a plate here. To do that on. So you just want to dip your brush in lightly and just offload your paint so that when you are stenciling you don't have tons of paint. Whenever whenever somebody's saying that oh, they got a lot of bleed through, odds are that they had too much paint on their brush and it just leaked under the edges. If you are doing maybe a stencil that has a lot of detail and you really, really want it to be super crisp, super sharp, and here, maybe if you're doing it on a piece of furniture where the time investment is gonna pay off for you, then you could actually stencil with your base color first, meaning on this one I would stencil orange and then I would stencil the black once the orange has dried so that any leakage under the stencil is the orange. And that's what you always do if you are taping off shapes. Let's say you're doing blocks or stripes on a piece of furniture. You would always um, stencil with the base color first or and, or paint with the base color first, or with a clear polyacrylic. So it's going to act as a barrier. Okay, so there's our little, there's our witch. Doesn't she look good? But let's peel this off. And there's our little witch. Now, I have one other step that I wanna do on these, but let me get the other three, like the other two, stenciled so they can be drying. And we'll get them going. Oh, I'm gonna do the pumpkin next. I'm excited to see the pumpkin. Now, I do want to show you before we move on to our little tins, um, one little thing that I'm doing on the pumpkin. The ghost and the witch were just thin line outlines of the item, but this has a lot of color and a lot of body to it. So, somewhere on my table, here we go. So I do have a little bit of dark wax. Now dark wax is brown, okay? So this is a brown wax. I'm just looking for a little, a little, little paintbrush, if I have one. Okay, I'll use this guy, all right. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny dab of it and I'm actually gonna wipe most of it off and just roll this on my paper. And I'm just going to kind of take this and just sort of highlight some of those top edges a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading on it because, you know, it's got a lot of surface area with With the pumpkin, it just adds a little bit more definition to it. So you could go around the outside of each of those segments. You could go down the middle of them. I mean, you know, whatever you want. But I'll pull this off and you can see that it just adds a little bit to it. 
And I need to get my pumpkin out because I need to do it on one of the tins. Oh, just come out. And there you see, it just adds a little bit more um, oomph. It just kind of pops, takes a little away from just being too simple. So we're gonna set that off to the side to dry. Let me get my ghost out because I need him for one of my tins. Okay, he's cute. So there's our ghost. Let him dry. And now we have our tins. Now, the one thing that I did do with the tins last night before I left was I sprayed them with a polyacrylic. Just because uh, stenciling on a really curved surface like this is a little bit challenging because your stencil wants to pop up. I'm just looking for my witch. Meaning that when I have it like this, if there are tiny little pieces like these lines by your head, they're going to want to go up. So if I tape the whole thing down, then typically too much of it is popping up to be able to do. So I actually like to just tape one side and then work my way across so that I'm keeping it level and I know where it is. But I have the tin sealed because if I really mess it up, I have a bit of a chance to maybe wipe it off and fix it. And at least taping, it's gonna be a little bit easier for it. Now, I do know that my top and my bottom are going to need some tape when I get to it because I had cut off edging. So I need a little bit more edging um, for that so that I don't go over, right? Okay. So I've got a little bit of my black paint. I put it off to the side. I find this easier to do toward me. gonna be pouncing on top of my fingertips but that's okay this is DIY paint so it all washes off now I'm getting by her foot which is where I cut some off so I need to protect my tin and I'm getting by her Peel this off and show you. And there we go. Cute little witch on there. This will have to be resealed, so I'll just spray that part again. Um, and I do have a Happy Halloween that I was debating putting on all of them so that I have that back in front, but might be okay. Maybe, well, I'll try it on the witch and we'll see. There we go, okay. So that's how we're doing the tins. I have the little knobs that we already spray painted black. I told you that I would be doing that and those are um, drying, well, they're dried. I did that overnight because then I don't have to smell it. Um, and I'm gonna do the other two tins with exactly the same. I just wanna show you before I carry on um, a little bit of what I had planned for these ones as well. So I have my IOD ink pad stamps and they might not be very juicy, so I'm gonna add a little bit more ink to them. So let me just add a little bit of ink. Let that soak in. I just don't want too much right up on the surface. And I'm just going to use this to kind of accent my frame. I'm just gonna rub it along the edge. 
so I get a little bit of that detailing in there. And then I can also do it on that inside edge, just a bit, just to give it a little bit more definition. And I don't mind if it smudges, I like that. It just gives a little bit more of a pop. And frankly, you can take a paintbrush, dip it into your ink, and kind of accentuate some of those smudges if you want. so that it doesn't look quite that pristine. And there we go. So I'm gonna do that. I just think it outlines it a little bit better. I'm gonna do that. Once these are dry, I'm going to seal these as well, okay? But I'm gonna do the black on this one and then I have my white ink to do on this one. So I'm gonna do exactly the same. So I'm gonna finish off my little frames, get them sealed. I'm gonna finish off my tin cans, uh, get them sealed and the lids put together. And then that project's done. This is mostly dry. <clears throat> and you can see perhaps that I didn't bother to do it so that it was perfectly um, covered or painted because we're gonna be dabbing on and creating texture and things. Anyway, so what I have on my little plate here is I have some Summer Crush, I have some of my layered chocolate, I have some old 57, I have some pennies from heaven. Um, over here I have my modern, uh, I've the metallics Rustoleum bronze open. Um, I got a couple of brushes and I got some sponges if I need them and Really, I'm just gonna start dabbing some color on it. So, putting it on a little bit irregularly, so you can kind of see, just kind of heading up, the orange going a little bit more where I want some of that rust to look. And I'm just moving my brush around in some different directions as well. So again, I don't want it to be all perfectly even and looking painted. I want it to be um, irregular and, and you know, different, different tonal qualities. So with this, I'm just looking to build up the color so you know I can dip into some of the other colors as I need to and I'm not switching my brush out you know I can if I need to um, start layering colors after but I'm just going to keep building this up a little bit up the body of this and nothing more complicated than this okay I'm kind of digging the finish you can you can start to get an idea of how it's going to look I want that kind of worn modeled look um, doing doing kind of the, the the dabbing if you will right is definitely giving it a textured look and appearance without it being super rough but you know rust has got kind of a bit of that texture to it and um, I'm just kind of adding that in so I'm gonna keep going and uh, adding that all the way around and letting it dry. Just have to make sure that maybe my inside edge is a little bit done just because we'll see that, but 
you know, painting, painting was, was going to be the easy part of this. So <laughs> figures, it's just the way it goes, but I want it to have that, that worn aged sort of fall look, not brand spanking new. So, you know, you do what you gotta do. As you go, you keep building up color until you get kind of this wonderfully modeled kind of aged look. And now I'm really grateful that the other way didn't work because I think this looks, this looks way cooler. It's going to look way better. So um, you, just, you just keep dabbing until you have the look that you want. And what you don't want is for it to be all uniform, right? So you don't want all the the blue to be evenly distributed or the orange to be evenly distributed you want it to have this mottled kind of rough kind of aged look and that just looks so grungy it's awesome now to finish this I am going to spray finish it just because it's got great texture it's got some rays to it, right? Some some roughness. So that that lends it some more character. I don't want to uh, brush on a poly and start breaking that apart or brush on um, some wax and breaking that down. So I am going to use a spray finish on this once it's dry. So once it's dry, I will add a spray poly. And then once that's dry, we can move on to the next step with this. But okay, I love that. I love that finish. Look at Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to have to do a piece of furniture like this. Okay, digging this. All right, great color combination, guys. And definitely, definitely, definitely going the Summer Crushed versus the Fire Starter was the way to go. That, that burnt orange, kind of almost already kind of rusty look. Awesome. So as I'm waiting for everything to dry again, <laughs> it's just the way it goes. That it's one of the one of the things you know being in a shop is that there's no downtime. You know when something is drying, then you are working on another project. You're jumping back and forth, or you know you're loading product, or you're doing something. So it's it's always active. Now, a couple of things about this guy. I mean, already, I I I, I love him. Kind of cute. So what I do want to do is I've got dark wax here. Now I'm using any Sloan just because these things last forever. I think I bought this, mm, okay, long before I started using DIYs. So maybe six years ago and it's only half gone. Um, but I'm just going to add some dark wax to my, to my, What's this called on a pumpkin, this stem? On a pumpkin, it's called a peduncle. Um, this is like a pear gourd thing, so I don't know if it's called a peduncle on that or if it's just the stem, but I just, I, I just don't want it to be so light colored. And I don't mind the variation, so having the two, so it just kind of tones it down a little bit. Perfect. The other thing I want to do is take my dark wax and I want to add some of it in. So I'm just taking, because this just looked too pristine and it's got wrinkles, right? And I like adding the dark wax to it so that you can see those, those wrinkles and it just kind of ages it, right? So let me do all of this side and then I'll show you. So this side, you can see that it's sitting in the wrinkles, and this side is just bright and shiny. Either works. So it's just a preference thing, right? It's, it's what do you prefer? And because this is already sealed with the Mod Podge, right, I'm able to do this, and it's not you know, and I'm able to move it around. I could take some clear wax to be able to um, lighten it up again. You're probably not gonna get it all out of all of those wrinkles, but if you went too heavy, although you saw how heavy I went and how much I was able to move that around, so. 
I'm really not going light, but I just wanted it not to be pristine. I wanted some of those wrinkles to right, see the, the texture that it gives it. I wanted to use that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Somebody had said I always look clean on my videos and I don't know how because I am always covered in stuff. So I just keep washing my hands between takes though. So that could be it. All right, let's see if we can make this go a little bit more spirally. So what I wanna do now is to make it a little bit more decorative is I wanna add some flowers. So I have a little bit of greenery that's not all in the bright oranges because I'm using some flowers that are, and these are super cool because they look a little bit sunflowerish with that textured center, but it's almost like a bit of a, a stiff burlap in the center. So I thought what we could do is cut a bunch of these all off and add them around our, our stem or peduncle, whatever we're going with right now. A couple in some slightly smaller sizes too. I don't think I want any berries. And oh, way to kill my scissors. I want to cut off. have four but I'm cutting off three <laughs> it's that odd number thing right we'll use the one somewhere else okay so as my heat gun heats up I just want to start adding these around the base and my my leaves I'm gonna lay down first and I'm putting them further away from the stem because my flowers are gonna go up closer to the stem. So I just kinda of wanna start off by acknowledging that those, those leaves are, that the flowers are going up there so then my leaves don't start up that close so that they still are hanging down far enough, if that makes sense, right? Then I have, I, I leave them visible. And I give the flowers some real estate. Okay. So those are my three bigger leaves. I'm gonna tuck, I have three smaller leaves. Uh, hang on, maybe I'll do my flowers next and then I will tuck the smaller leaves where I need to because I might want them up closer to with, with the full knowledge that I have tons more leaves I could use. So I'm not limited. But I have that natural three logical places now to be able to put my flower stems. It's a nice big one. And they've always got kind of a flip to them, right? That, that, uh, where the flowers are more open or less open and just look to use that to your advantage. Like this one has this natural bend. So I'm going to put it in a way that allows that bend to just seem natural rather than an unfortunate circumstance. <laughs> so it can look squished. So that's the reason that I put him under that curled up stem, peduncle, whatever whatever we're going with here. Okay, so they covered up by the stem really nicely. So I think I'm gonna take these little leaves and just pop them up a little bit higher so it just comes down a little bit more like this. See, so it's a little bit fuller. And then, then we're good to go. Well, metal cornucopia is done. And look at this, guys. Look at that textural look. Okay, I'm, I love this. All right. So just to remind you, this was done with a base coat of layered chocolate. 
and then dabbing, I used a little bit of layered chocolate, Old 57, Summer Crush, and Pennies from Heaven. And I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work that into a piece of furniture sometime because I think it's gonna look awesome. So I flattened this out a little bit so that it would kind of lie flat. And the idea is that we're now gonna build kind of the floral display out here so it makes this nice, beautiful, long tablescape. Perfect for uh, down a dining room table, on a sideboard or buffet, um, something like that. So what I do wanna do is stick some floral foam in there. So I'm gonna cut the edges off and just a little bit on a slant. Okay, but this gives me the creeps, this stuff. You know, some people have that, uh, they can't touch cotton balls or nails on a chalkboard. This one just freaks me out for some reason. It just, uh, the feel of it as I'm cutting just is, is icky. I, I don't know why. It's just, eesh. there's always something. Okay. A little bit more on this side. And I save these little pieces to be able to put into small projects, you know, obviously. To, in, in my mind, that goes without saying, but... Right? Okay, cool. So now comes the fun part, because we're just going to be gluing and sticking things in. Now, usually, Spanish moss goes kind of in last-ish, but I actually, for something like this, Lord, this makes such a mess. I actually like to kind of tuck it down in the sides and across the foam. So just kind of stick it down in the sides of the foam and just have it there so that when I am sticking the flowers in, they're going through the moss and kind of holding it in place. I can add more later, but I just find that this gives me a better um, base coverage of it so that, um, you know, it's just, I'm not trying to squish it around every last little floral. What I am leaving is the bottom blank because if I need to, I can hot glue items down into there. So I have some big kind of rust colored flowers. I have, um, some fake wheat that I thought would be good around the base. Um, certainly, you know, lots of leaves and uh, greenery and all that kind of stuff. take a quick look at our finished projects. So for Halloween, we have our cute little canisters. So they could go together as a set, all with different little candies in them. They all say happy Halloween on the reverse. And then we have our matching little pictures. So again, um, kind of, I would mix and match them all um, so that you get a, a different combination, but just super cute, super fun. I mean, if you've got little frames like this, the other thing that you could do that I was, I was actually debating after I was sealing them is just kind of dry brush the white all the way around here and dry brush the black around the outline so that you have, um, uh, more of a contrast. So if you'd like, that's an option for those as well. And I may go back and do that. Who knows? These guys, nice and cute, easy to find little canisters in any of the thrift stores. This big paper mache gourd, um, 
it's just kind of a cute little tabletop. You could just put it up on top of um, a candlestick if you wanted. You could add some extra greenery underneath, put it as part of, and some extra fresh gourds around it as a bit of a tablescape. But it looks great. I love the little bit of the dark wax on that um, raffia tie at the top. And um, I really like it putting the dark wax over it. Now that the dark wax is dried, if you wanted it shinier, you could buff it and still have the dark wax look, but have it a little bit shinier, but I kind of like it in the, in the slightly matte look. Our big project, and I gotta tell you, I really, really love the, I really love the finish that we got on to our big metal, I don't know, cornucopia, is that what you call it? Um, so it, it, it does have the hanging hook on the back, so it could hang um, if you wanted, because it still has the, uh, the opening on the back, and because I flattened it, it'd sit nice against the ceiling, uh, against the ceiling, against the wall, or laying it flat as part of your tablescape. Um, just so pretty. So I had um, added some little tiny sticks that had uh, just a little bit of texture coming out, some extra pine cones here and there, but it's really just about putting your florals in places that make sense to you. Um, and so glad that the first experiment failed because it wouldn't have looked as good as this. And I really like, I really let me know what you guys think of, of these. Always love to hear from you. I will be doing um, some more fa fall ideas uh, because I'm in the mood. <laughs> and, uh, and I have some extra ideas in my head. So watch for those, they'll be coming up. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not done with fall. Like I can't, I can't move on to Christmas yet. I'm, I'm still in the fall mood. So look for me doing uh, more fall crafts and then some others interspersed in there that really aren't one season or another because hey, that's the way it goes. But again, thanks for tuning in guys. Let me know what you think. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, take care.